The, we show it in the exhibition like this. Um, we did not ask for the whole cabinet. Um, it is too complicated. It is one of the national treasures. But we got these two pieces in the exhibition. And please keep that in mind, because we will show it in a moment. Um, this is one of the doors from the sides of the cabinet. And it shows in the middle um, you have green marble, Verdantico, um, with these cloud formations. And it shows a wonderful story. It's um, King Conrad III who uh, besieged a castle of the Guelph family um, in 1140. And he granted the women to leave the premises that they got spared, and they could take their most precious belongings with them. And instead of their uh, wonderful tresses and gold and silver, they carried their husbands on their back. And, and the king just had to look on. What could he do? Um, he had promised, he had granted, and he could not break his royal word. On the other side of this is the same door, on the other side, it's painted from both sides. Um, you have a vision of the Temple of Salomon, and you have Sicilian uh, Jasper, which is enhanced with tiny little figures. So you have uh, nature again together with the art. And when you open this piece, it's a fall front that comes down. You, you see inside doors and drawers, and some of them are really decorated with Florentine mosaic. So you see the interaction, um, how the Florentine uh, models and materials were used in the north um, across the Alpine mountain. A very nice example is the uh, slab, the pull-out slab of the piece that we have upstairs. And um, here you have it's the so-called um, Piscina marble. It's uh, from geological deformations. You get this kind of uh, look. This is all made by nature. Um, and it looks like the cliffs um, of a rocky coast, or it looks like ruins. Sometimes it's also called ruin marble. And these stringations look like waves, like the ocean. And so here, this was used for the background and then enhanced again by painting. Uh, the connection to Italy is interesting because this is a table in the Munich residence. It is uh, first documented there in 1586. It is ebony inlaid with um, hardstone and came from Florence. And if you look at these motifs, you see how close this is. And this motif can also be found in some other Florentine cabinets, but also in Augsburg cabinets. And it must have something that either Heinhofer picked up in Florence. Maybe um, he got one of these models. Or maybe even they were prefabricated. And you could buy them and take them and incorporate them in another piece of furniture. The back of the piece uses um, these kind of wave formations. And you have the story of Jonas and the whale, uh, where here he gets thrown overboard, and the whale is about um, to uh, swallow him up. We are lucky to can show this piece in a, in a photograph, in a blow up. And we uh, are very fortunate then that the Getty um, gave her the loan this object, which looks very unassuming from outside. But like with the big cabinet, you can open all four sides. And it came from the same workshop, Baumgartner, um, who was one of the 27 artists I showed you on the little painting. And when you open it on all four sides, you have different drawers with pieces that Heinhofer took from his own Kunst und Wunderkammer. And here, in this case, these are boxwood uh, carvings. Then in the front, you have, again, uh, boxwood carvings, but you also have miniature paintings 
and um, uh, taught with Shell, and you have a big piece of Bohemian Jasper. But sometimes it's um, interesting when you prepare an exhibition and the colleagues have to pack the piece and they take examination, um, they found out that underneath here you have these kind of um, almost like, like strings um, there, there is damage, and this comes from, from, the tech, uh, from the technique that you could turn this piece, you could sit in front of it, and you could turn it around. So most likely, it had a lower part here, and it had uh, some rolling balls with a mechanism that you can, can turn around, and it's the same mechanism that is still uh, can be seen in the piece in Uppsala. Of course, this piece is so heavy that you had somebody to turn it around for you. But uh, as the owner, you um, uh, had the luxury just to stand or sit in front of it, and somebody could show you the four different sides. But this was not known before and only discovered um, by uh, the conservation department of the Getty Museum during or in preparation of the packing. If you take a piece like that and you just frame it, um, you advance in the period, in the Baroque period, this is an Augsburg cabinet from around 1780, but Augsburg also made goldsmith's work, uh, where it was very famous for. You see here a Kunstkammer painting um, by Georg Kinz, and you see here a jewelry casket. This is one um, in the green vault coming from Augsburg with agate. And you see how close it is, and um, these things all had their cases uh, that they could travel. Another center in Germany was Freiburg. Uh, Freiburg belonged to Austria at that time. I mean Fribourg en Brisgau, which is uh, um, in the Black Forest or not far away. And even there we have some um, of these design drawings that were discovered. And they exclusively uh, worked on rock crystal and on agate. And we have this piece in our collection, which used to be a cup, but then later it became this hook that you can close it and you can seal it. And I think this was the period when it was used as a reliquiary, because reliquiaries always had to be sealed with the um, seal of the bishop um, for authenticity, which um, sort of uh, is very often um, a big question. There, wa there was another region in Germany. Uh, it, it, at the time, it was Ida and Oberstein, um, uh, uh, two small villages, uh, like 80 miles south of Frankfurt, southwest of Frankfurt. Today, it's one, one city, but there were very, very rich uh, stone findings. And this is a, these are two wings. And you can lift up the upper part. You can open it and set in these different kinds of stones. And there are three tablets of it. And I urge you to go through the exhibition to look at them. Here is one. You see how thin they are. And um, there are 49. And for 49 days, you could change the color of your stone. And the clue is that the piece was made for an elector and archbishop of Trier, uh, so um, he must, be, must have been very fashionable for the period. 